We were the first generation of comic book people who wanted to do comics. We really wanted to specifically write and draw comics and tell stories the way we thought we wanted to see them. When I realized that I could publish my own fan magazines, I didn't have to be only working for someone else, I started writing and drawing stories for my own fanzines. And that is really what I guess, propelled my interest in doing it professionally, but I didn't know how until I was actually asked. I would send out my fanzines to the publishers. Back then there was only like DC and Marvel, so it wasn't very hard. And maybe two or three editors at DC and one editor at Marvel. And a couple of the editors at DC got to know me from the very first comic conventions. They read my stuff and they asked me to submit some material. My view of storytelling is fairly straightforward. There used to be a thing there was only 11 plots or seven plots or who knows anymore what, how many number of plots there actually are. But there's infinite number of characters. So if story, if plot rather, not story, is limited, what I like to do is find my little wrinkle on making it interesting or whatever, but really center on character. Because character is the one thing we can do that is always going to be fresh. What makes your character strong and powerful is how that character climbs over those blocks you put in the way. And all the impediments that you set up for them defines the character. So you have a story that's fairly straightforward. You have a story that's about X, but really the story becomes about Y. The first thing anybody sees with a comic is the art. So you have to understand that. But the thing that may bring them back is the story and the characters and what you're writing. So it has to work on both levels. It has to be interesting visually to attract their attention. And then it has to be interesting story-wise to have them want to come back to you. Artists know how to take a lot of scenes that in your head could go on for a long time and shrink them down to two or three panels. They could visually tell the story a lot faster. And when you're working in collaboration with someone like that, it means that every panel uh, is telling more than one thing. It's, it's not just a single uh, story point, it's telling something character-wise and you don't have to write to that anymore. You can now write to the plot, you can write to the character, but you don't have to put every little type of descriptive dialogue in there. And you discover that that's exactly what the readers want. They don't know it, they think they want the big action stuff, but they really want those uh, character moments. So when you speak to fans, and I was a fan for all my life, what they will generally talk about is the character. I don't know if readers have changed these days to wanting something different than what they wanted, say in the 1960s, 70s, 80s, 90s, whenever, but the way you tell your story is very different today. When I'm writing a comic book, I'm controlling the pacing, and I'm controlling the emotional highs and lows of a story, and I'm controlling the plot same thing with a TV show, same thing with a novel, a uh, movie. They're all very linear. Video games are completely different. The player is controlling most of that. The writers in a video game, they're working on the overall story. Why is the character doing something? Why are these characters moving in this direction as opposed to this direction? The power of the brush. You didn't need a writer in the days of Pong. 
You didn't need a writer in the days of Pac-Man or uh, Donkey Kong or any of those, though there were stories, certainly in Donkey Kong, because you had to rescue the princess, and there was a concept. But as video games matured technically, and you had voice matching the characters, and you had storylines starting to develop, people wanted to see other type of games as well. I have traveled through time to warn you. This is my past, but your future. And it means the end of humanity, so together, we must change it. What have you done, Luthor? Given you a fighting chance. He's lying. It's some kind of trap. Why should we trust you? Because if you don't, Earth is doomed. We all work together in video games, and it's probably the most collaborative medium I've ever worked in, and I love doing that, because we're all sitting there, we're all coming up with ideas to make it more interesting. So the writer, I'm sitting there writing the script for the cinematics, which are the little movies in between the uh, actual gameplay, and I'll also be writing the in-game dialogue, but it's the game designer who comes up with, uh, here's what's going to be happening, write the scene. So I'll come in with the emotional concepts and the story concepts, they're coming in with the action concepts. But in a game, my view is, if the game is, isn't interesting, it doesn't matter how well written it is, and if the game is interesting, then the writing only pluses it. But the game has to be interesting first, so it's the game designer who has to come first. We've moved to a very different type of storytelling, but the core of it is all the same. It's still stories about people on trial in some fashion trying to solve their problems and either succeeding or not succeeding. <laughs>